we're going to go ahead and talk about the adjustment nodes. So if you go back and watch my original video on the primitives, you'll know that we kind of just went through all the primitives, talked about what they look like and what we do and the settings that are in some of them. I'll probably go back and redo that video just so we can cover each primitive individually instead of just having it all in one video. Uh, but for the time being, it's still a good resource. If you want to go back and watch it, um, you can go back and watch that. But in this series with the adjustments, we're going to go over one node at a time and just talk about what it does there. So these will probably be a little bit shorter videos that get right to the point, mostly. But uh, let's go ahead and start before we uh, get too long into this video. I'm actually going to skip over uh, what I say abs. It could be ABS. Um, I just call it abs just because I'm not exactly sure how to explain what this does. I know what it does, I just don't know how to explain it. So we're going to skip over that for the time being, and we're just going to go straight to auto level. Um, this will probably be the last video I make, so if you want to know what ABS does, I apologize. But I'm going to try to make these all as fast as possible while covering all their info, so hopefully you don't have to wait too long before I come out with an explanation of that. But let's go ahead and start with auto level. So here we have a Voronoi noise that I threw in there. And uh, what I want to do is I just want to turn the strength down just a bit. <clears throat> Oops, that's on the auto level. My bad. The scale. There we go. And uh, we're going to go ahead and clamp it just a bit. And this is just to kind of show off what the auto level does a little bit more. All right, so we're going to go ahead and connect it to the input there. And you'll notice that there's already a difference. So this is before and this is after. It's because we turned the strength down quite a bit. Now you can see what else it's doing. So this will really help you um, kind of stretch your terrain vertically, but it also it keeps a lot of the small, finer details as opposed to equalize. So if we were to apply equalize to our terrain, it would probably make it more bulky. So we can go ahead and equalize that. And we lose a lot of the finer details that it's in our terrain. So auto level, in my opinion, would be the way to go before you do any kind of equalization on your terrain. Use an auto level first, because that way if you have maybe erosion patterns that you want to keep, equalize will, or auto level will actually keep those for you, and then equalize will usually get rid of those, uh, or at least cover them up a little bit. So let's go ahead and talk about the other settings that are inside of this node. You have logarithmic and equalize, where I talked about that, as well as gamma. And this one's pretty self-explanatory. Everybody who works in any kind of compositing program, maybe like Photoshop, uh, even in Cinema 4D in some cases, knows what gamma does. So I'm just going to not even apply any kind of explanation to this. But you could use gamma. Uh, you can even use auto gamma if you wanted. So we're just going to not talk about those. It's pretty self-explanatory there. So first you have apply auto level, and you have to have these checked before it will do anything. And this strength right here is just between 0 and 100. And the less strength you have, the less auto leveling there is. That's simple, pretty self-explanatory. Now log logarithmic, if I could say it, uh, this applies log logarithmic uh, leveling. And you have to check apply log there before it'll do anything, and this will actually do kind of the similar thing what Equalize does, but it'll bulk up the terrain. This one gives it more of a, like an inflated look, and you can also inverse it if you want, so if you didn't want it to make it look inflated, you can go ahead and turn that off. And of course, the log here, this is just the slider for how much, essentially how much strength you want in the logarithmic uh, auto-leveling. Then Equalize. And obviously we went over equalize. This uh, auto level right here, I would say, is probably preferred over using equalize. But again, this slider right here, all it does is change how much equalization on the terrain there is from 0 to 100. All right, so that's pretty simple. And again, with auto level, as with most nodes inside of Gaia, you have these options down here you can choose from to add additional effects if you needed to. You can also use a mask, and this mask can drive anything from erosion uh, to select heights and slopes and angles and stuff like that. So uh, kind of just use it to your heart's content. I mostly use auto level when I export or import um, like an image into Gaia, like a file. 
because I need to bring out certain features that might not uh, be appealing, I guess, because they're too flat or there's not enough info there. Auto level helps bring in the details where I need them pretty well. So I don't use it too often, but I will use it uh, in some cases, like maybe when I'm using an erosion node, for example, and we can just connect that up to the Voronoi. And I need to bring out the definition in, let's say, like the where. I would hook it up like that. Just like that. Don't even connect the output to uh, the auto level. Just connect it straight into the where. Turn on auto level 100%. Um, you can use equalize, I suppose, but I, again, I don't really recommend it. And then up here, and I'm just trying to give you an example of what I would do. You can put this into, uh, let's let's do like a texture. Like right there. So let's see what we can do here real quick. So we got the auto level texture here. We got to combine these two in some way. So let's go ahead and do, actually we can just do a sat map from here. It's going to break. Let's do a sat map there and let's also do a set map here and we'll just kind of show you what what would what it would look like without the auto level as well so let's make one more set map apply that to the where we're going to change some settings around so we can actually see how it's going to go so let's do a mixer and we're just going to mask in with this auto level here. Set it to 1% blend. Let's change this up. I don't care what we use. It's all for educational purposes. And we have to mark this for color. There we go. So that's with just the texture to the erosion and this is there's a slight change as you can tell very slight change especially if you look right here very slight but that's because we can make some changes here so on the auto level we're going to apply 100% strength here and let's just do equalize and now you can really see what's going on here bringing in that where information from the auto level and we're just blending it together so we can be really decisive on what we want here by changing it from a hundred maybe down to maybe 40 and now you can see the differences here this is just a quick example you probably do it uh, some other way but now you can see it without the auto level if we were to apply it there and take off the mask because we're not going to need it we'll just put it over here in the where I guess we can't do that with the mixer. So we're just going to do it without the mask of the auto level. And now you can see what we're getting here. We're, we need to change the blend to something like max or uh, maybe even screen would be a good, maybe, maybe not screen, at least not a hundred. Let's do max. Max is usually a pretty good way to go. That's with max. And you can see how we're, it's coming in. It actually looks really good. Um, but it's very faint, I suppose. So that's with the set map uh, directly connected to the wire. And that's just with it being blended between these two. So, anyways, uh, you can control the strength of the wear map through the auto level if you wanted to using just the auto level option or. Um, the equalize and I actually like how more faint it looks between these two because of uh, you can use it as a mask and the blend looks a little bit better in my opinion especially when you use a ma max max option with uh, without and with and then you can just you know change it how you want anyways um, the auto level allows you to, it's just a compositing tool is all it is, just simply put. It's just a basic compositing tool and it equalizes your outputs. 
uh, or levels your outputs. I apologize. Levels your outputs. Anyways, that'll be it for this uh, video. So I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next one, which will be bias and gain. And I'll just pick up right here where I left off.